Hello everyone, I am Prarthana. I am a PhD student at University of Oxford and if you are planning to apply for a DPhil in Oxford or Cambridge, then this video is for you. The questions we'll address are, is it worth applying to Oxford and Cambridge and spending that application fee? What is the application process and how do you secure funding? So the first question is rather a personal choice. If there are many places that you want to apply to an application fee is not a barrier, I would suggest that you do take a shot because the experience is holistic. It's worth it in my personal opinion. But if you're one of those people like me who do not want to blindly apply to 20 places, want to be very selective about where they apply so as to be smart about the money they spend, then do check if you have reasonable grades and ample research experience to show. I say reasonable grades because Oxford and Cambridge, if you do not know this already, they have a separate admission process to offer you a seat and then there is a funding assignment and these two are not necessarily linked together. So in a lot of European countries, when you apply for a PhD position, funding comes naturally with it. You don't have to do anything extra. But for Oxford and Cambridge, it's a little difficult. They, you might end up getting a place, but secure no funding. And for a lot of people out there, that might not be a feasible idea to even pursue that PhD. So one thing to consider um, for these funding applications are how good is your academic record? So if you can prove on paper that you have had a reasonable record, or you, you can showcase potential, then you make a stronger case. Second, research experience. If you are a DPhil applicant, then it makes your application even stronger if you can showcase that you have done certain internships or semester projects or a master's thesis. For a lot of students from ISERS, you must have done one year of work and it counts a lot. Um, third thing would be that you have good recommendation letters. So, so the professor that you have worked with, if they can give you a strong recommendation, that will make a huge difference to your application. So it's up to you now. If you don't think your grades are that good and you don't want to spend 70 or 80 pounds on just one application, you might as well want to try other European universities. Oxford is not the ultimate goal or end of anything. It is a good experience, but so are many other universities. But if you think you have reasonable grades, good experience, and you think you can get re good recommendation letters, I would strongly recommend you to apply because this can be a life-changing experience. So once you've decided that you want to apply to Oxford or Cambridge, the very first thing you should do is contact your potential supervisor. It is not a requirement by the application per se that you should necessarily tell who you eventually want to work with. But these are the people who are going to hire you. These are the people who are going to interview you. So it's very important that you actually talk to them in advance, tell them about you and listen what projects do they have in mind. Because end of the day, even if it's Oxford or Cambridge and you do not like the project that you're going to do, it is not worth it. So it's a PhD, it's a long commitment. Please make sure that you like the project that's out there for you to take up for your PhD. So once you have talked to your supervisor, you should, you should send them an email, say, attach your CV, tell what your academic qualifications are, what your interests are, and ask them for an interview or a meeting, basically. So once you have that meeting, it will bring you clarity about their interest in yours. Once they suggest that you should apply, um, then the application process is usually around December. So for Cambridge, some courses, it's 1st of December. Some courses, it's 15th December. In Oxford, my application deadline was 6th of January and it varies around this time. So please, please check out when the application deadlines are. Once you uh, start applying, um, the application goes through usually two to three processes. First is departmental um, selection where there's a committee which reviews your application and if they find it suitable for the position, they would shortlist you for the interview round. You would get an email where one or two people, which are your potential supervisors, they will talk to you 
now usually this interview setting is very informal you don't even have to dress formally for this it's just to get to know you better to understand where you come from how much of a research experience you have what are your interests to ask you basic questions about things but it is not intimidating at all once that is done um the department will take a decision on whether they actually want to make you a conditional offer of admission if they decide to do that you will receive a letter from the university uh saying that you have a conditional offer but this does not mean that you have funding yet so when you're applying for this position there will be a, a checkbox in your application that asks do you want to be considered for departmental funding and you have to tick that yes so that your application naturally goes to the funding process you don't have to do anything extra so now once the department nominates your application to the funding body they will select or review if they want to make you an offer of funding um for this there might be another interview so for me i had a second interview with the head of the department because they wanted to decide on who they want to nominate for a particular scholarship um that can be a little subject oriented and they might ask you a lot of um questions uh from physics or otherwise so be prepared for that and as far as other funding options are um uh, concerned there is an option to apply for separate fundings or separate scholarships for example the road scholarship the application deadline is super early uh so it ends around august september and you have to and and the selection process is finished way before the application for phd even starts so please make sure if you want to apply to oxford it's a great great idea to also consider road scholarship it is extremely competitive but i think it's worth trying uh analogous to that for cambridge is a gates cambridge scholarship which also requires it has its criteria uh, about leadership potential and how much uh, do you want to impact other lives and how is your research related to that so all of these things so if it applies to you please consider applying to these scholarships so uh, it increases your chance of actually ending up with a funded position at this university there are several other funding opportunities which you will find on dedicated pages of oxford and cambridge university websites so they have an excellent excellent search uh, space for uh, scholarships on each of these uh, university websites and you can select as per nationality course um degree program which all apply to you uh, some of them have a separate application while most of them will be included in your main phd application process itself some of them will be included but they will require you to let's say submit a research proposal for example in the gates cambridge scholarship so you just need to talk to your supervisor get a research proposal or think about it come up with a decent idea of what sounds like a good project for a phd and you have to uh, put it in your application so yeah so it so happens that a lot of people do end up with uh, phd positions but not really funding options so don't be disheartened um, i would just say please do not place all your eggs in one basket apply to other european universities germany france netherlands if us is the place where you want to go please apply to the us um, another thing i would or want to uh, point out here is even if you get funding in the uk it is not as good as other european places so you have to keep that in mind it is universal for all uh, phd's across uk you get a fixed amount which is decided by uk ri and now your expense depends on the place you live so if you live somewhere north of uk it can be really cheap and you can save on a lot of money but if you live somewhere close to the south let's say in oxford oxford is an expensive city so you might not end up saving anything so you have to consider all of those factors also um another thing would be that visa process 
and healthcare is different in different countries so in uk i did not know this earlier so i want to tell you this in uk when you apply the visa fee is around 40 to 50000 this year but it is increased for the next year and the immigration health surcharge is a lump sum amount of money which you have to pay up front so that you can use the national health service in uk so this is increased now please check the prices for four years it was 2 lakh 60000 for me which is a huge amount of money so please make sure you plan all of this out a lot of the universities did not uh, reimburse this amount but recently they have realized that it's a huge amount and they have decided to um reimburse this so please please consult this with your supervisor or your funding body if they will reimburse you the inter- immigration health surcharge amount because it can make a huge difference for a lot of people um if you have more specific questions about the application please let me know and i'll be more than happy to answer them for you thank you